All right, today we're going to be looking at section 7.1, um, exponential functions and their graphs. Um, I want to try to keep it really simple and show you basically what you need um, to go through this section. Um, there's a whole lot we can learn about exponential functions, but I'm going to try to keep it very basic. So um, in this first page, you see uh, the definition of an exponential function. Um, f of x, some function um, raised to uh, the degree x, where you have a variable in the exponent position. <clears throat> there are two types of exponential equations. Primarily, they are growth and decay. Um, one is increasing and one is decreasing. So if your base, the number that um, has the exponent x as a variable, if that number is a whole number larger than 1, it doesn't have to be a whole number. It just has to be any number larger than 1. Your graph will be exponential growth, which means it will be increasing. Um, so this blue line right here going from left to right, it is increasing, increasing, increasing. Um, all exponential functions that um, do not have like any transformation, so like these two examples we're seeing here, the first one is one-third uh, to the x power. So this number is less than 1. It's going to be exponential decay. It's going to be decreasing. So this graph is going down from left to right. But I want you to notice um, some common properties. Both of those will go through that ordered pair 0, 1. And that's what I want you to note. If there are no transformations, your graph will go through the ordered pair 0, 1 always. That's because if you raise anything to the 0 power, it is 1. <clears throat> so just to drive that point home, I'm pulling up the calculator just to show you. Um, in parentheses, 1 divided by 3. And I'm going to raise that to the 0 power. And then if I do 2 and I raise that to the 0 power, um, I can even do a negative number. I could do negative um, 4 over, let's say, 9, for example. And I can raise that to the 0 power. Okay. We get 1 every time. So <clears throat> with exponential functions, they will typically go through that order pair 0, 1, provided that you just have the basic form that is some number raised to the x power, so degree x. They will all go through 0, 1. And you can kind of see um, the growth when it's bigger than 1. It could be 1.2, it could be 1.01. As long as this number is bigger than 1, it will grow, go up from left to right. And when it is less than 1, it will decrease left to right. Now, there are some other properties that we will look at. Um, let me see if I see any in the um, the examples here in this section. It's not very many pages. We only go to page 7. I might have to just give you some handwritten notes. Okay, so <clears throat> see these examples? Um, this one has an x plus 3. So if you recall transformations, this is going to move your graph left or right. Now because it's plus 3, it's going to do the opposite. Normally plus 3 is going right. But this plus 3 is going to shift it to the left. So instead of this graph going through 0, 1, it's going to get moved to the left. Um, and I think they may be showing you that here. So this is the 1 half going through 0, 1. But when you add the plus 3, it moves it left 3 spaces, 1, 2, 3. And so you're no longer going through 0, 1. So We'll be looking at all those properties of exponentials when we're graphing them and uh, the transformations, whether it flips across the x, flips across the y axis uh, because of the negatives and then the vertical shifts and horizontal shifts. So we'll talk about those. Um, and they just work the same way that they did with transformations of functions um, in a previous section. Um, and then Beyond that, we will be solving some exponential functions. Um, and I don't see 
any of those examples. Here they are at the end. So one of the things that will help you with solving exponential functions is um, being familiar with exponents and uh, raising numbers to like the second power, third power, fourth power. Um, what I recommend is that if you just Google search, let me see. Um, let me just look up for power table. Power table. Let me see if it'll pull up a power table. Um, this, this is the one I like. So it shows you numbers 1 through 10 um, all the way up to powers of 10. So if you have this handy, which I will keep this site up, and you can rewrite uh, numbers. So like say uh, 32, you know that that's 2 to the 5th power. Just have this table handy. It will make things much, much easier when it comes to solving um, exponential equations. So for example, we have 25 to the x power and 125. Okay, you want to be aware that both of those can be rewritten as powers of 5. So they're showing you down here. They're going to move the 125 over by adding it. And then they're going to rewrite both of these as powers of 5. So 25 is written as 5 squared. And 125 is written as 5 cubed. Okay, you can also see that from this power table. When you go to the 5's, 5 squared is 25. 5 cubed is 125. Um, I would say it would be very beneficial to at least be familiar with everything to the third power. Like if you can know those on command, any number to the third power that will help, and then the power table for anything bigger. But they rewrite them both as power of 5. Um, when you have a power to a power, you multiply. So then, once the bases are the same, you can ignore those because they're not going to affect the problem and the only thing you're focused on is the 2x equaling 3 and then you solve 2x equals 3 by dividing by 2 and you'll get your solution. So the big key here is being able to rewrite <coughs> these um, numbers, these terms in exponential form so that you have the same base and once you have the same base you focus only on the exponent part. Okay. And then that's pretty much most of what we're going to see. Now we will solve uh, piecewise exponential functions. I did not see any in these examples, but we will see one um, in the homework. I'm not seeing a piecewise. I'm looking, I'm looking, and I'm not seeing, not seeing a piecewise, which is okay. Um, I will show you how that works. Um, in the section. So yeah, there's no piecewise function. Um, <clears throat> but I do want to at least describe one more thing <clears throat> as far as what I'm going to be doing with these exponential functions. <clears throat> so we're going to have an exponential function y equals and I didn't see any um, coefficients out front, but I'll just say it A, and then you have a base, whatever your base number is, and then you might be raised to the X minus H, I'll do it, and then plus K. So <clears throat> what I want you to know is that um, this H will shift left or right left if it is positive and then right if it is negative okay you will also you might have a constant that's being added so notice if it's up there with the x small exponential left or right if it is um, outside plus with the big part of the problem this will shift up and down up if it's positive and then down if it is negative. <clears throat> so if you have 
y equals, let's just say, 1.2, okay, raised to the x. It is bigger, this is bigger than 1, so your graph will be increasing. Okay, going through that point, okay, 0, 1 always, okay, unless you have some shift. <clears throat> then you also have something that could be less than 1, let's just say 0 0.9, it could be a fraction, but 0 0.9 to the x power. This graph will look like decay. So it'll be coming down from left to right and just hugging that x-axis, still going through that point zero one. 1. <clears throat> now, other properties I want you to be familiar with, so I'm going to do the same example, okay? y equals 1.2. And what I'm going to do is write this to the negative x power. So what negative x does, it, it looks exactly like decay. What this does is it takes this graph and flips it across the x-axis. So everything that was negative is now going to flip over to the positive, and everything that was positive is now going to flip over to the negative. So this, um, I want you to associate with the property of a negative exponent is also the same as something like this, one uh, over, normally we don't see a decimal at the bottom, but 1.2, which we could see it like that. This is equal sign, not negative. One over 1.2x, the fact that it's in the bottom makes this look like a fraction. This is also the same as one over 1.2 to the x because you can write 1 to the x power is still just 1. So um, notice that this is the same thing. It's going to be treated like decay. Okay, So if you see a negative exponent, it's going to flip it across the x-axis and make it look like decay. And similarly, if I had, let's say, 1 half, and I made this to the negative x, so this would be decay, but it would flip, okay? So this would look like exponential growth. So that negative exponent um, is just going to flip it to make it look different. But these are the general shapes that you're going to see with exponential. And for the most part, we're going to be doing a lot, a lot of graphing um, and seeing what they look like. The more that you know uh, going into it as far as how to work the transformations, shift left to right, and uh, just the general form that the exponential function will go through the point zero one unless acted on by a shift or transformation, um, the better off we will be. So we're going to go through this section. Um, again, I'm trying to keep it very simple for you, and then um, we'll, we'll go on to the next one.